Joep, welkom uh, at Private Kitchen. Uh, thanks for being with us. Uh, I'm very curious. You've been now for three years in the LA industry, in the Hollywood industry, and, and you have been around uh, before that in the Dutch film and media industry. Can you say if something about the differences? Um, what you like about the American film industry and what you don't like, and the other way around about uh, the, mm -hmm. the Dutch uh, media and film industry. Yeah. I'm curious about that. Uh, there are a lot of answers I can give here, but one of the things I really like about the American way to approach things is that you really do it as a team effort. So, um, and I also actually used that uh, on uh, a Dutch film I did two years ago. I didn't. I decided not to do it alone, but to invest some money in uh, having somebody help me with orchestrating, having somebody help me with mixing. Um, uh, so it's a, it's a real team effort and I can spend more time in communicating with, with the director and actually writing stuff. Um, and besides my work as trailer music composer and film composing, I also do additional music writing for composers here. Mm -hmm. And that's also a very interesting way to enter the, the US film, uh, film industry because you don't have the full responsibility for, for a studio, but you do get sometimes 30-40% of a film to score and um, you talk with uh, with the other composer, with the lead composer instead of the director and you really get some insightful uh, uh, things on that job. Some big differences also I believe is that here on the bigger budget movies you really need to record with a full orchestra and they, they budget it for you so um, in the Netherlands, sometimes it's hard to fight for a budget for live musicians, but uh, here it's something that's usually included. Mm -hmm. So that's something I really wish would be more uh, uh, normal in the Netherlands. And even a small string quartet and some soloists uh, uh, combined with sampled orchestra makes, a, makes such a big difference, and it's not that expensive. And it's really something I try to to take with me in the in the Dutch jobs I still do. Well, one of your colleagues in in LA, Vijay Pierapot, uh, told me in an interview that the, also one of the differences between the, the Netherlands of the Euro European industry and, and the American industry is that in in America it's really in fact it's business. Mm -hmm. it, where in Europe they it's can be partly business but it's also kind of art. Uh, yeah, do yeah. You also it really find depends. It? Yeah, it really depends on if it's a big studio movie, then it's usually business, and there's not a lot of your own influence <laughs> um, mm -hmm. involved. But a lot of indie film projects, they actually do have a lot of uh, space for you to experiment and try and try new stuff. So that's I really see. Uh, a big difference between the big studio films okay. and the indie projects and also documentaries there there are great documentaries that are um in within the indie uh, side of, of things but there are also uh, big network documentaries very mm -hmm. standard and very business-wise just sensation uh, so yeah there's a lot of a lot of more business stuff going on here and just making money eventually and do you also see a kind of change in the industry because the, the, the whole uh, streaming uh, services like Netflix, HBO, Amazon, Amazon yeah. are coming up more and more and uh, winning prizes also at, at, at very well-known film festivals. You see uh, on a lower extent, of course, the same thing going on in, in the Netherlands with Videoland from the commercial, the TV stations, etc. Yeah. Uh, you also notice this in, in America? Does it change the type of work for you or are you not involved yet with this kind of stuff? No, yeah, not for me yet because I'm not involved yet. I would like to do that. But I hear from colleagues over here that it's really tough to do, negotiate contracts with oh, yeah. streaming services because a lot of times you really have to fight for your royalties to, to keep them. Oh. Um, I mean, in, in the films, film studios and, and, the, and the streaming studios, they are really... Uh, pushing for um, a package deal nowadays so you get one fee and you have to record the orchestra and you 
and, and within the package deal they uh, de determine if you get royalties yes or no uh, so it's the industry is definitely evolving and but the upside of this is that there's so much great content being made so mm -hmm. all the composers over here everybody's fighting over and all the shows of course uh, but there is a lot more to actually pitch on and to get involved in okay so there's more work possibilities yeah eventually okay. i i definitely think so yeah okay uh, just going back to what you've said in the beginning is uh, the the additional writing that you also do from time to time how, how do you get this kind of jobs of the uh, composer approaching you because they have met you they know you how does That's that work stuff like that really happens when you live here that's one of the big advantages mm. if you live here uh, a good friend of mine also composer chad cannon he mm. did a lot of orchestrating for composer tim williams mm. and tim williams also orchestrates for tyler bates but he also does his own projects and on one job uh jurassic park so chad introduced me to tim as an orchestrator and mock-up uh, composer for Jurassic World live tour, a, a big live tour with puppets and uh, dinosaurs based on John Williams's music. And I jumped onto that job and I got uh, good friends with Tim. And afterwards, Tim asked me for a ton of other work. And eventually, uh, I've done two movies as an additional composer with him. So, but you also have your own team already uh, in certain cases, if you, if you want. Yes. Uh, I, I guess it's also a matter of budget that you can afford to do this. Yeah. yeah. Also something I really, I've really seen here, which surprised me is um, a lot of composers, they almost spent their whole budget they get on the whole score with hardly anything left, sometimes overspending just to make sure they deliver the best quality and to be noticed. So they just spent their whole budget on recording the orchestra, hiring people and just making sure it's the best because that will guarantee them a next better gig with a bigger budget. Ah. And that's something I never did in the Netherlands. I always made sure I had at least some <laughs> money left. But um, it, it really, it, it's a really interesting approach with that I kind of doing more and more like spending more on the on the live orchestra budget even uh, though it goes of my uh, paycheck but eventually i have a better business guard with uh, a good score so it's also kind of investment that you do uh, yes in, in, yeah. in the future for your yeah. own career yeah i see well again okay, thanks for all the information you shared with us and for the audience if you want to have a closer look at other interviews with you or have a closer look at privatekitchen.nl. Thanks and see you later.